Hey guys, today is Monday, December 18th. It's another day here in Hong Kong. Today I visited a few so-called popular tourist places in Hong Kong. Well, according to Google anyways, from what I searched up. These places are not a must-go-to place in my book since I'm not the biggest shopper. But if you're already in the area and you need some souvenirs, well, you can probably just quickly run through these places. The first place on the list is the Ladies Market on Tung Choi Street. And what you can expect here is a bunch of outdoor shops that are selling toys, clothing, shoes, purses, little souvenirs, and makeup. If you continue a few blocks north towards Nala Road, you'll reach a street dedicated towards pets. And unless you live in Hong Kong, you probably won't be buying a pet, but feel free to window shop. What you can expect to see on the street is a bunch of fish, turtle, rabbit, and hamster shops on the street. But over on the next street is Fai Yun Street, which is, in my opinion, better than both of these markets. There are tons of outdoor vendors here, and on top of it, there's a bunch of restaurants nearby as well. But this one's a lot more spacious and it's more spread out so you can actually walk around and then shop as well. But they sell about the same items here from clothing to bags to baby stuff to souvenirs to little trinkets and phone cases, drones. But uh, you can take a, your pick from all these night markets and see what you want to shop at. If you're going to visit Fayun Street, I highly recommend that you walk to the pedestrian walkway above the market. You can get some nice photos and videos of the entire area. All right, first vendor that we're gonna eat at is Feige. So this place actually has quite a bit of a line here. But they offer similar snack items that we had at other street markets. Let's see, octopus, oh, pig, and turkey kidney, three for 26. Pretty much what they're offering here is the same as all the other vendors, but I figured they'll be worth the taste here just to see how the quality is. So here from the looks of it, they actually give you pretty big uh, portions of octopus, which is pretty nice. Kidney looks pretty big, and our intestine actually looks huge. Alright, first up, kidney. <laughs> mm. It is actually a really good kidney. So this kidney is like moist, a little bit spicy, has that horseradish sauce, has a sweet sauce as well. Doesn't taste gamey at all, and it's not dry good. Next up is our huge pork intestine. They actually give you really huge pieces. Mm. Oh, the horseradish just hits me all at once. It's like having a wasabi. But this kidney, it's actually quite gamey actually. Last piece is our big pieces of octopus. These are pretty huge, so I'm pretty excited about the portion sizes. Ooh, the, uh, before I was gonna say the octopus is really good, horseradish just kicks in. If you don't really like horseradish, you can tell them not to add it. They'll, they ask you, like, do you want this? Just say no. But for the most part, the wait was only like five minutes, not that long at all. But just as good as Fat Boy Shop and Hong Kong Local Snacks, it's about the same. But I think the octopus here is the best out of all three locations that I went to so far. So I don't know what this shop is, but I saw tons of people just buying baked goods from here. So it looks like traditional snacks here being sold. Looks good. I think I'm gonna get the thing that kind of looks like hold up. But for my Vietnamese people, or if you know what Bang Kam is, this is exactly what it tastes like. Bengam is kind of like a fried pastry, but on the inside there is a red bean and there's sesame seeds, and it's a gooey batter on the outside, but it's really good here. One other thing that I want to try here are these juices. So I see so many vendors here with fresh fruit and stuff, so I think I'm gonna try some. But regarding what fruit do I want, I'm not sure. Got my star fruit juice. So watch them make it. They literally just cut up some star fruit and then they juiced it. So I opened it so you can see what it looks like inside. It looks like a bunch of foam, but it's really light color. Oh. It's like, it's really tart, but it's not as tart as like lemon or lime. Mm. It's really good. On Fayun Street, there's a big municipal building that has a market inside of it as well. What you can expect to find inside are floors that have numerous vendors selling fresh fruit, vegetables, meat, and seafood. There are also a few roast meat vendors here selling roasted duck, roasted pork, and Chinese barbecue pork. 
and on the top floor there's a dining area where you can buy food from various stalls. But fortunately for me, it was closed when I arrived here, so hopefully it's open for you when you decide to visit. Alright, just dropped off all my stuff at the hotel. We're gonna grab some dinner. So our dinner spot's going to be none other than Ipudo. So Ipudo is a ramen place, but from the looks of it, their menu is a lot different from the one in Tokyo. So Ipudo in Japan typically only has three types of ramen from what I've been to. In New York, they have a variety of appetizers, and here we have appetizers, which is nice. So it even says that where it's from. So this one's Ipudo, Japan. The buns came from New York. And then they have yakitori here as well. And it looks like they have the three ramen. So Shiromaru, Akamaru, and the special Ipuro Karaka. Oh, they also have black as well. Here's our tori ramen here from Ipuro. So there's a chicken toyu broth. It's not a tonkatsu pork based broth. So they gave us chicken, they gave us egg, they gave us bamboo shoots, spinach, uh, seaweed, and the fake crab roll right here. Alright, gonna taste this ramen. Hopefully it's good. I've eaten at most of the best ramen joints in Tokyo already. So this is the first time I've had ramen in one, two, about three weeks. So my sodium levels are getting low. Noodles are good here. I asked for medium. You can ask whether you want it like soft or firm or medium. I think medium is a good choice. So number two, we gotta try the broth. So I have a light chicken shoyu broth. Ooh, this broth is actually good. Ooh, the broth is really light. You can taste the chicken stock. Not too oily. Mm. Pretty good. I'm gonna try a piece of chicken. Chicken to me is just okay. It's not super soft, super tender or anything. Um, the fat of it, it's not super fatty either. It's a very lean piece of chicken. But overall, I think the chicken is just okay. The bowl, I think. Versus all the other ramen that I had, probably like a three and a half out of five. Definitely not a four or a five for me, but it still hits the spot. Alright, so there actually is another piece of chicken. There's the white meat. The first piece I had was the dark meat. The white meat here is much better than the dark meat. The dark meat was a little bit dry, but this white meat is actually very tender, moist, it's good. Into my egg. The egg, just alright. It's not super runny or gooey or anything, it kind of just feels just average. Next thing I want to taste is my unagi bun. <laughs> okay, so the unagi bun is good here. You get fried crispy eel on the outside, the eel is fatty on the inside. The bun, although it's not as hot, I wish it was like more poopier and like freshly steamed. But for the most part, uh, overall, I say the bun's about a three and a half out of five as well. So I was quite curious with my bill here. So it's 227.7. This is the first time I've seen decimal. So I gave them 228, but they gave me 0.3 back. So I didn't even know this exists. Currency smaller than a dollar here in Hong Kong. I thought everything was one dollar, five dollar, two dollar, but there's a 20 cent and a 10 cent here. Overall, I give my entire experience probably probably a three out of five now after everything put together. Um, the bow was pretty good, but it wasn't like an amazing bow. I would say the bow was probably like a three and a half out of five. But I think Japan has totally ruined me for ramen. Like I'm totally sad that this has happened to me because I love eating ramen. But after eating at Tokyo, my expectations are like this high now for ramen. But I'm scared to eat what comes next like sushi because I've had really good sushi in Japan. So when I come back or whenever I try sushi again, 
hopefully it'll be good. I'm nervous.